Hey, good morning, Pete, North Las Vegas. Um, thought I'd do another uh, update video on my 71 Camaro, which I'm getting ready to get started back on after years and years and years. But I'm getting ready to get serious on it again. So anyway, um, I thought I'd go through the car in sections and I would start off with the front end today and work, work my way to the back of the car. But um, what I wanted to say was... Um, I'm going to be posting this video across a lot of different platforms and some of the platforms are not automotive or muscle car specific. So when I'm talking about certain things, I know that people at Z28, yeah, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir on a lot of stuff. Um, you guys probably know a lot more about this than even I do. So you're going to hear things that it's like, yeah, we already know that, but just wanted to say that I'll be posting this video across different types of platforms. So that's why I'm going into maybe a little bit more detail than I need to. Anyway, um, I thought we'd start off with the carburetor or first let's talk about the engine itself. It's a ZZ4 crate motor. Uh, it's what they call a 3D5 fast burn. And uh, they call it a fast burn because of the, the type of heads that they put on it. And supposedly the way it, it does this combustion process. But anyway, um, we'll start off with the carburetor that came with the uh, the crate motor kit. Um, yeah, obviously it's a Holly. But I had a little trouble trying to figure out exactly um, which Holly I had. And when, when the crate motor showed up, it had a GM part number assigned to the carburetor. So I got curious and said, well, you know which which carburetor do I have and it took a little more uh, took a little more research than I thought it was going to it, it took me a little while to figure it out but anyway what came with my uh, ZZ4 crate motor kit back then it was called a turnkey and it's a 4160 750 and there's the actual uh, Holly part number I think if I remember right that's the Holly part number and like I said it took me a little while to uh, to kind of figure that out um, I decided to go ahead and use some AM fittings for the fuel rail and um, I decided to go with a mechanical fuel pump I just didn't want to get into all the uh, electric fuel pump stuff and return lines and higher pressures and all that so just decided to stick with the, the mechanical okay so we've talked about the uh, carburetor a little bit um, I guess we could go into the heads. These are Doug's headers. And um, the ZZ4 heads have a slightly higher raised exhaust port uh, dimension in relation to the mounting holes. So not everybody's standard 350 headers will work with the fast burn heads. So back when I was looking for headers, um, I called all the big names. I called Headman, I called Hooker, I called uh, a lot of different people and said, hey, do your headers, do you know for a fact whether they fit the uh, the fast burn heads on the ZZ4 crate motor? And nobody could give me a straight answer except Doug's. And Doug said, yes, we specifically build our headers to handle the uh, raised exhaust port heads uh, on the fast burn heads. So that's why I went with Doug's. And these turned out to be really nice headers. Um, clearance, I mean, everything is just like perfect on them um, when you get down to the collector underneath the uh, the floorboards I got just the right amount of clearance there the only place that gets a little bit tight is right here and I've got maybe half inch of clearance there so that that should be plenty um, the car originally started out as a uh, 350 automatic and right now I got a Tremec with the 0.8 whatever the hell overdrive in it and uh so it's going from automatic to uh, Tremec 5-speed. Um, car did not originally come with a tilt steering column, so I went out to a, a company that overhauls these things and put in a tilt. Um, because it was an automatic, I had to uh, buy all the, the clutch linkage, which also came with the Tremec kit. I bought the transmission from uh, Keesler Engineering. and. Uh, a company called uh, Silver State Transmission bought Keesler out quite a few years ago. So uh, 
that's that. Um, the car's been sitting so long that things are starting to rot out just sitting here. And uh, so I'm going to have to take the front end back apart and replace some things. Um, the shock, shock bushings rotted out, so I got some new ones. And uh, as far as these uh, joints go, I got some new energy suspension covers. I got two different sizes, so hopefully one of those sizes will be, be correct for this. Um, one of the issues I had when I put the engine in were the, uh, the motor mounts. Um, I was off quite a bit, and despite my best efforts, I could not get the engine in. I tried Lakewood motor mounts. Um, those were the worst. I tried energy suspension, uh, not even close. And I finally ended up using a uh, Prothane and they were pretty close and I was finally able to, uh, you know, finesse the engine in. And I, I've heard, I've watched some videos where maybe over time these subframes, they, they start to uh, change their dimension a little bit. And that could have been what happened um, before I had the subframe powder coated and put it back in the car. Um, I measured it repeatedly just to make sure that the subframe was straight and everything came in within about, I'd say, an eighth inch. So I knew that the subframe was straight, but uh, for some reason I had I had a lot of trouble with the, the motor mounts. Um, the other thing is on these sway bar mounts. Now, I know some of you out there may disagree with what I'm about to say, but Camaro came with two different spacings, bolt spacings for the... Uh, the sway bar mounts and um, despite my best efforts using the Hotchkiss stuff I could not get these installed and I tried putting a C clamp on here I tried everything I could think of and finally I, I posted at z28.com and this was years and years ago and a lady there named Mary Posey decided to help me out these are her old housings and hers had these cutouts right here the ones I got from Hotchkiss did not have the cutout, so I couldn't get these these bolt spacing to line up. So what I ended up doing was using Allen heads instead of uh, regular bolts, and that allowed the head to recess into the cutout and allowed me to get my spacing. And then I used, I made some uh, custom washers, and these are made out of uh, prefab welding tabs that have a little uh, notch that, that fit inside here, so I've got a good... Uh, load spread on on my homemade washers here and I think that is about it for some of the the little bugaboos I had uh, getting the engine in the, the suspension in anyway uh, this will be update video number one and uh, the other thing I forgot to mention was uh, the car did not originally come with uh, power brakes. It came with manual brakes, so I put this in. Got the booster. Um, brand new steering box from AGR. This is the quick ratio. And, uh, okay, obviously, Willwood, 12.19 brakes. Um, mostly Hotchkiss suspension. Um, control arms, obviously, Global West, Dellum. Uh, bushings and so anyway that's kind of where we're at right now I'm actually going to get the the fenders on order from classic industries today I do have the uh, inner fenders ready to go I had them powder coated um, the radiator mount has been powder coated and that's ready to go so as soon as I get my fenders on order uh, I'm going to start getting back on this front end clip and uh so yeah that's where we're at today so like i said we'll call this update video one that's my uh clutch spring rig <laughs> it's a little bit hokey but it works <clears throat> the spring is actually supposed to go into a hole on the frame on the inside of the frame but because of the headers um, I couldn't run the spring straight to the hole. It was going to rub up against the header. So um, this actually 
puts a little bit more tension on the spring so you get a little bit more retention than if I would have used the frame hole on the side so uh, this actually kind of works out a little bit better I think <clears throat> All right, so that's where we're at, Pete, North Las Vegas. And like I said, I'm going to get back on this car. I got to get it done. Um, I just recently turned 64. <sighs> Who knows how many days I got left on planet Earth. So I got I to gotta get this thing done. All right, over and out.